errors. If you're running Home Assistant, at some point, you're going to get an error, which will leave you with a question. Oh, for the love of Paulus. What do you mean my input date times didn't load? They're part of core. And knowing where to start isn't always clear. All right, so the log tells us the problem is line 131 of our configuration.yaml. So we just need to jump into our configuration. Open the configuration.yaml and head to line 131, which is just an include line. And I'm not seeing an error here. So let's open the included file. This file stores some of my input datetime entities. So this has to be where the error is. We can do a quick search for daily underscore to find the exact line that has our problem, which finds nothing. <laughs> what the heck, man? Um, Home Assistant, you eventually plan to have helpful error messages in your log, don't you? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I track down an issue or error in Home Assistant. And all joking aside, the team has done a lot of work to make this easier. But as you just saw, easy isn't guaranteed. In fact, troubleshooting Home Assistant these days is more art than science, as they say. So hopefully this video can give you some ideas on how to tackle your next error. To follow along with this video, you don't really need to have any advanced knowledge. But in terms of maximum effort when tracking down errors, knowing how to access your YAML configuration files is going to be a good skill to have. Having an editor or add-on that provides line numbers is a must. Both Visual Studio Code and the Studio Code Server add-on provide this functionality. And I recommend one or the other. And lastly, experience with Home Assistant definitely makes this easier. But also, I've been using Home Assistant for nine years or so now, and this is still a challenge even for me. Anyway, let's get on with it. So as you saw in the intro, the error message in the log file isn't giving us a lot of help here. We know the input daytime integration is not loading, and the one clue we had turned out to be a dead end. So in cases like this, I like to check the docs, because sometimes things change. Here in the docs, I'm looking for changes in how the input datetime integration works. We're starting to see a lot of these integrations move from being configured in the YAML to being configured via the UI. And in those cases, a lot of times the YAML options are removed or changed in some way that may break your YAML configuration. But again, you typically get a repair notice giving you six months before those big changes. But it's always good to take a look just to be sure. And so far, everything in these docs is matching what's in my configuration. So the next step is checking for any known issues. And if you didn't know, you can click on this link right here in the documentation and jump right to any open known issues on GitHub for this specific integration. As of this recording, there are no open issues with this input datetime integration. Okay, so let's look at the closed issues. Okay, here's a recent one. Let's take a look at the notes. This one doesn't appear to be related to my issue. And in any case, was fixed in 2023.12.2. And I'm pretty sure as of this recording, I'm running 12.3. So let's keep looking. Here is one input date time integration not loading. Let's look at this one. Okay, this doesn't look like my exact issue. The error message defined here is different than what I'm getting. But it is close, so perhaps there are hints in this issue. Looks like this person has their input datetime defined in a package file. For anyone watching this that is unfamiliar with that package concept, you can enable packages with a simple line in your configuration.yaml file, which allows you to define a folder of YAML files. If you're trying to avoid working with YAML, this integration really won't be useful. But it is great when you want to organize all of your YAML configuration related to a specific area in your smart home. For example, I have a Jarvis package which contains anything related to my text-to-speech configuration. And one for security that has everything related to my security functions. I even have one called Sensitive that contains sensitive parts of my configuration I don't want public. 
which allows me to exclude them from the public repo on GitHub pretty easily. Each YAML file in this package folder acts as another configuration.yaml file and can include the same domains or integrations as that main configuration.yaml. Helpers, automations, scripts, and scenes defined in any of these files are visible in the appropriate UI editor, but you can't edit anything in these package files from the UI. In any case, it wasn't the package file that was the issue according to these comments. Because based on the notes here, the input date time lines were moved from the package file to the main configuration.yaml file in an attempt to rectify the issue. But there is also a note here that says you don't need to add input date time anywhere if you have the default config enabled and you want to be able to add these input date times from the UI. Okay, that is technically true. If you want to add input date times via the UI, you just need the default config enabled in your configuration. But you can have default config enabled and add helpers via the UI and still add input date time to your config manually. But there is also a note here that suggests manually defined entities need to have their name string wrapped in quotes. And from a YAML perspective, that is a good practice, but the documentation literally shows them unquoted. And I would always refer to the Home Assistant docs as the source of truth. So all that to say, take these comments you find in these issues with a grain of salt. But in any case, Home Assistant tells me there's an invalid slug in my config. A slug refers to the entity which needs to be lowercase and not contain spaces. And I don't think you would ever wrap a slug in quotes. The referenced slug is not in my configuration.yaml file, and it's not in the file linked from that line the error gave me. So let's start removing parts of the config to see if we can get that error to clear. My configuration is all over the place where I have input date times defined everywhere. So we're going to comment out this line 131 that it says is the problem. We're gonna save the file and restart Home Assistant. Anytime you make changes to your configuration.yaml file directly, you should restart Home Assistant just to make sure everything reloads correctly. Unfortunately, a lot of time, the easiest troubleshooting is a process of elimination. And I typically start with removing recent changes to my config or parts that I suspect aren't working, then restarting. If the error goes away, then you know it's somewhere in what you just commented out. And if it's still happening, then you know your princess is in another castle. After the system comes back up, I can check the error log again. And look at that. It gives us a different file and line number as our problem. So we might be getting closer. Let's jump over to the announcements.yaml file, which is a package. And holy crap, there it is. The offending daily underscore slug. I'm not even sure when that happened or how that happened, but it should be daily underscore report. So I can save that change. Head back to my configuration.yaml file and remove that hashtag from in front of line 131. Save and restart. And now, when it comes back up, our error is gone and it appears the input date time integration is loading. As you can see, the error messaging in the log file is still not always clear, but it is getting better. At least we were able to get to a point where the logs pointed us to the issue after we had to disable some stuff. Now, of course, I probably could have found this faster if I had just searched for daily underscore in my entire config. Loser. But in my defense, at the time, I was trusting the log was telling me where the error was. And I wanted to walk you through my thought process when these errors occur, because they're not always quick to find. In any case, I hope walking through this gave you a few more things to try when you're troubleshooting your next error, which will hopefully help you get back to automating the boring stuff just a little quicker. <laughs>